Hello and welcome back to Let's Play True to Grad with me, Bring It Down. Now the gray man who offered to play the local card game with you is shuffling his cards pensively. He heaves a sigh of relief as you approach. Have second thoughts? Are you ready to learn the secret lore of Bomba Gun? Okay, teach me how to play. The man claps his hands with joy. I'd be honored. I can give you a set as a present. It's an open, see? Always keep one or two on hand for new players. The eccentric fan of Bomba Gun hands you a foldable square vaguely reminiscent of a chessboard, and a deck of cards wrapped in oil paper. Okay, so it is a card game. You play as a warring city-state. You have six cards per turn, which you can use as actions. And cards can create resources for your city, use resources to attack the enemy, and build defensive fortifications in your city. That is our health points. If we run out of these, we lose. Some cards will consume health points for more damage to the enemy. Okay. Armor points reduces the damage that we take, but they also get consumed. They can be replenished unlike health points. Alright, action points. Each card has an action point value. You can only play what, uh, what you can afford. Action points cannot be gained via card use or lost due to an attack. Action points are added one point per turn. In the first turn of the game, both of you and your opponent have one action point, two during the second turn, and so forth, until 10 per player. Food points, which shows how much food your city has in stock. You can add this resource by playing certain cards. Some attack cards can only be used if you have enough food points. And housing points. To show how much living space your city has, you can add this resource by playing cards. Some attacks can only be used if you have enough housing points. First card is Dugout. Resource cards which will add, which will cost you and one action point. You play this card or add one housing point to your city resource pool. Okay, pretty straightforward. So add one food for the cost of one action point. Two action points for three defense. One action point, one food for two damage to the enemy. And it destroys one housing point that the enemy has as well. Turn up Remembrance Day. <laughs> It'll be discovered once for every deck shuffle. Use it wisely. See, I'm a Veronach. Wasn't he the guy in charge of the Diamond Mind in the north? You have a dealing with his gang. You don't deal with him directly in the previous campaign. You do deal with his men. It's a very tough fight. An endgame card. To play it must have five action points, so also consume three of your own health points. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Redraw a single card each turn, but you can only do this at the start of your turn before any cards are played. Switch cards exchange with a random new one from you from the deck. So that you wish to switch a card. What did the draw button? Is that what this is? No, it's right here. Okay. Yeah, uh, let's play just for fun for right now. I'm not going to get bogged down in this too much. I might play it some off camera if I want to grind out some, uh, some moolah. Okay. 
I like where this is going. Oh, we have five points, what to play? I liked that a nice little victory there. Barely, but I did it. Alright. That's pretty fun. Oh, and it adds a new button to uh, conversation. Cool. The great man who taught you Bomba Gun smiles as if you two were old friends. Hey yo, fancy around? I'm always game. Haha. <laughs> Never beat the four grandmasters without practice after all. Okay, so that's probably like a side quest. What? Who are these grandmasters to whom you refer? Haven't you heard? Just like in any other sport, there are Bombagun champions. These four are the real deal. To be any of them is the greatest dream for a serious player. These Grandmasters are really hard to find though, and it's no surprise. After you've robbed half the city in competitive card games, you're in no hurry to show your face. They still need to eat. You might run into them in fast food restaurant, for example. According to Bombagun rules, they're bound to disclose their title to whoever challenges them. So I just gotta challenge everybody I find. Okay, easy peasy. I see. Uh, perhaps you could tell me where to find these masters. I told you. No one knows. When there were still tournaments, they usually wore hoods, or even masks. When you've beaten half the city, including thugs, ex-cons, and the cruel agents of the secret cartel, no surprise you don't want to be recognized. I'll keep my eyes open. Another question. I'd love to play a round of cards, but sure, let's talk. Oh, what's your name? I am player. Not the player. Just player. I once put my name up as part of a wager and lost. Are you serious, dude? Hehe. <laughs> okay, you got me. When I look into those trusting eyes of yours, I cannot lie. Even to an absolutely hilarious joke. I like to create a mystique around the game, you know? To make it more exciting. My name is Timur. Timur the player Timurez Timur Yezev? Oh, what do you do here? I mostly sit in the guest house, waiting for new bomb gun players. Sometimes I also work as a wood turner. Let's not talk about the bad times. What can you tell me about the city? A lot of people criticize Trudegrad. I mean, immigrant workers from the north are deliberately kept in poverty. Engines are tiny, and the authorities are trying to drive out older folks. New rooftop constructions are going to collapse, taking the entire city with them. Here's my trump card. This is where Bomba Gun was invented. Checkmate, critics. <laughs> Any hot rumors to share? Here's an interesting one. Some Bomba Gun cards are based on real-life celebrities, like Sioma Veronok, or Cohen from... Zero bids on. But do you know that Rat Boy is based on the Krasno Mayor? At least that's what the True to Grad papers say. Okay, cool. So we have a semi side quest for Bomba Gun. A well dressed, dark haired man in his 30s leans on the counter and looks you over from head to toe. Ugh, all the butterflies are going to swarm around this one. What do you want? It isn't anything important. Would you mind taking a seat someplace else? You're ruining my game. You're not the boss of me. Squint menacingly at him and leave. <laughs> the dark-eyed man who studied you so closely last time greets you with a short nod. What is it? Why did he give me such a weird look when you first saw me? The dark-eyed man hesitates before answering. I'm waiting to meet a lady of easy virtue. It's not going to do me any good if such a woman happens along. I'm sitting right next to some other handsome hunk. <laughs> I've been studying you to determine if we're on the same level when it comes to the delicate craft of seduction. And what's your conclusion? The man wrinkles his nose in annoyance. Gosh darn it. Have you taken a look in the mirror this lifetime? Like a study in physical magnetism. Muscles like chiseled marble. Proud bearing. Easy going demeanor. Not one person here missed your entrance. 
As long as someone like you is hanging around, I haven't got a chance. Uh, tell me about this delicate craft of seduction. Seducing a woman is like hunting, except for the killing and gutting part. You see a chick sitting alone or with her friends, drinking port or compot, casting appraising looks around the room. You approach her, oozing confidence and charm. Start with something funny or mysterious like, but I can guess your name. Offer her a drink. Chat her up. Make her laugh and admire you. If you do it right, she'll agree to relocate somewhere private. Down south, if you catch my drift. <laughs> yeah, women are not things. Everything you just said reminds me of an AK-47 manual. I don't see how this approach could possibly yield results. My friend, these tricks work like a finely calibrated Swiss watch. I know from experience, and I don't disrespect or look down on women. You think I deceive them into doing something they don't want to do, that I'm using them. Flirting is a game for two, brother. Would a woman with no interest at all come to a place like this? Listen to a stranger make, making cheesy jokes, and agree to go somewhere alone with them. Women want it as much as men do, and have the exact same attitude towards a one-night stand. The only difference is they usually don't suggest it themselves, but wait for someone who knows his business to make, his fir make the first move. That's how it is. Yeah, nothing you've said has changed my opinion. Let's talk about something else. Ah, I don't feel the need to argue with you or prove anything. You do you. I see. Uh, so how are you getting on? To be honest, not that well. I haven't met a single available babe yet, but I won't give up. I've got nothing better to do anyway. You have nothing better to do than just wait around. Can you believe it? I really don't. Someone I trust manages all our finances, and I travel. Stupid Astrakhan is no good anyway. Now what's wrong with Astrakhan, though? I'm interested in your opinion. The girls know me out of that way. I know they don't stand a chance. Except the chance for some carnal delight for a night or two, of course. Women willing to have sex without the pr prospect of a relationship or rare species back home. They call me things like the Julian the Erotomen, less charming names. To be honest, never seem to fall for me. Where do you find a business partner you can trust with everything? What kind of contract do you have? I wasn't actually looking. It was nothing but pure luck. I can tell you're not being entirely honest with me, but I'm not going to push it. Right, so where do we stop? Right, enough about that. I'd rather ask you a few general questions. Alright, there's not much to do here anyway. Tell me what you want, but if a pretty chick comes ambling your, our way, we need to wrap it up quick. Now, uh, what's your name? My name's Julian. Just Julian. Here's some fool of a woman referred to me by a cruel nickname. Just ignore her. What kind of a nickname? Depends on her manners. Someone once called me Julian Sidorov, Astrakhan Gigolo. My last name isn't even Sidorov. I've also been called a de de degenerate hedonist and a moral lecher. It pains my ears to hear that. But what do you do? I'm waiting for my one night bride. What else is there to do? I have money and no other hobbies. The laws of economics stipulate that money can't appear from nothing. What's the secret of your success? There's nothing magical about it. A person I trust runs my business for me, is all. Uh, what can you tell me about Trudegrad? You can't exactly call it the City of Brides, but you might call it the city of plump, cheerful ladies in their 30s, and up, who are bored with their marriages. And that's what matters. I know any good gossip. The only interesting thing I can think of is this. If, like me, you're unable to pass up a nice-looking chick, keep yourself in check if you happen to find yourself in the local port. The Hot Mermaid statue there is cursed. It makes scary sounds as you walk past. Alright, also, I want to check one thing real fast. Yeah, so another advantage importing your character is you get to carry over these extra things that you can find or unlock in the previous campaign. So, like, Entomologist, you find, you get that as a reward for a quest. Uh, same with Ghostly Protection, uh, Mother Tattoo, Fatality Master. I forgot what this is from. I think this is from having so many points into melee weapons. Uh, Streetwise you find in a book, uh, same with Action Hero. 
No, action hero, you watch a movie. And the Adam tattoo. So yeah, that's another advantage to importing your character. Plus, I have extra points here as well. Well, I had an extra point in luck. I got I lost it when I killed a spider. And then you can find uh, syringes that give you other bonuses as well. All right, let's talk to the barkeep. I will keep the thermos. I can sell some of this other junk because we won't need it. I approach the innkeeper at the bar. You're too tired to talk much yesterday. Now that you're well rested, why not? He greets you pleasantly. Hello, dear comrade. How did you sleep? But the bed bugs didn't bite. And they did. You have the tiny inflamed spots on your skin. The man's smile turns into a rictus as he flails his arms in the air and shakes his head. A thousand apologies. I'll send someone to charge your sheet change your sheets this instant. Well how embarrassing. I thought I got rid of those pesky things. Suddenly he smacks himself on the forehead, as if remembering something. You don't need to worry about bed bugs anymore, I swear. I wanted to warn you about something. After you went to sleep the other day, a man inquired about you. Oh, uh, what a twist. What did he ask? Nothing special. I wanted to know whether I knew you from someplace else. I told him it was your first time visiting our establishment, and maybe the city itself. I'm guessing he was intrigued by your stature and your gear. Season adventurers are rare in these parts. Can you tell me where this guy is now? Afraid not. I've seen him a couple of times on the outskirts. He doesn't come in here often. Was he spying on me? Where did he come from? You see he at a table when you came in yesterday. Sneaky little fellow. Let me to call him Pencil. I don't believe that's his real name though. Shocking, right? But nothing to be done about it now. Can we talk about something else? If you say so. Maybe like something to eat. Or maybe one of our famous souvenirs. I guess I could use a drink. Let's see what you've got. Expensive. 138 rubles for a sausage. I heard you're up to no good, man. That true? Me? Oh no, God no. Who told you that? No matter. I just heard it somewhere. People in the city love to talk. And the crazier the subject, the more they talk about it. The only sin I'm guilty of is stealing apples from a neighbor when I was but a mere lad in short pants. That's it. Well, calm down, buddy. I'm not going to push you. Gunner chuckles nervously. Yeah, the harder the times, the crazier the rumors. Don't pay them any mind. You mentioned souvenirs. What can you tell me about those? I'm so glad you asked. I saw these medallions with an engraving of the city skyline. They're a tangible way of showing how Trudegrad is the capital city of the Wastes. I have a few left right now, but another batch will be ready soon. Would you look at that? Do they sell? Like pancakes, friend. Budograd is famously uh, civilized. Everyone's a keepsake to take home with them. Right, where did you get these? Did you make them yourself? Oh no, I buy them from local craftsmen. Around the city there are numerous villages filled with handymen. I make the orders to support the local professionals. Uh, cool gig. Hey, can we maybe discuss something else? The customer's wish is my command. In that case, I have some questions for you. Yes? I'm listening. Uh, what can you tell me about Trudegrad? A pleasant place to live. The authorities never barge in and interfere in private businesses. And do you know why? Because our leaders are successful businessmen themselves. If you believe the rumors, even the city police is a commercial enterprise. Isn't that grand? Uh, sounds very nice indeed. Of course it is. Imagine if anarchy ruled true to grad. If anyone, and I mean anyone, attempted to fight the status quo, it would be a disaster. 
Everyone with backwards ideas like that must be punished just as brutally as in any totalitarian society, which we thankfully are not. Uh, tell me about the hotel. Only I've only had this place for two years. Before that, I shared ownership with my uncle. Only ever asked two things from him. Up the salary of Ludka one and a half, the waitress, and to install a lightning rod on the roof. But since he never listened to me, Ludka ditched her job and left for the dead city. The inn was struck by lightning. Since I don't speak ill of the dead, I'm not going to tell you what I think about my uncle's management skills. The new building I built all on my own, including the spacious cellar. I still owe money. I still owe money to some of the help. Do you give me some advice? In Trudegrad, people are judged according to their looks or by their manners, and in critical situations, by their smell. So I advise you to use cologne from time to time. Well, I'm not talking about you personally. You're a pleasant smelling fellow. I'm just saying. Heard any fun rumors? A lot of drugs are being smuggled into the city nowadays. I find with harmless stuff like Devil's Weed, but they also sell Black Lotus. There are never so many hard drugs around in Soviet times. Hmm. Got anything else? Uh, did you know the people in this city who actually drank Varenka, the highly dangerous chemical moonshine being produced in secret somewhere? What a dummy you'd have to be to even try it. Everyone knows it makes you go blind. Sorry, but can you, can you stay a while and listen? Alright, Deckard Kane. Indifferently. Yeah. What is it? Well, it's a very precious book somewhere in the inn. The surrealist novel I've been um, writing. I know it sounds foolish, but I'm an aspiring author. Now, please don't go out of your way. But if you happen to stumble upon it, I'd be very grateful if you could return it to me. I reward you too. I'll keep an eye out. Alright, so he just gave us a quest. Uh, is the... There it is. And he said he lost it in the hotel, right? I'm gonna do a once round real fast, make sure it's not in any of these closets or anything. Most of these have been cleared out. I could probably ask the, uh... this woman about it. Okay. You also mentioned something about a cellar? A certain slightly drunk man is looking around condes condescendingly at the other patrons. Seeing you, he spits out the toothpick he was absentmindedly chewing. Salute! Are you here on business, or just looking around the city? Uh, business. Well, look at you. I'm here on business too, promoting my book series. Cool. Can you tell me more about it? Sparty Andrews, did I? Perfect. I've written a number of books about a certain Adam agent who went in search of a missing general two years ago and exposed a terrifying conspiracy along the way. Trust me, it's going to be a real bomb. Where did you learn about this agent? Good morning, village boy. Did you just emerge from the bottom of a rabbit warren or something? It wreaked so much havoc around Krasno that seven people 
That's seven people digging with seven spades for seven years. Who cannot get down to the truth. Interesting. Did I read some of your work? I would loan it to you. I don't want anyone stealing my brilliant ideas. It's based on real events, but who knows what actually happened. Not me. I had to invent a few details here and there. That's what gives zest to the story. My embellishments made it so much more than a truthful account. So people are writing books about me now. That's unexpected. Uh-huh. So you're this agent. Look, mister. If I had a rusty Kopeck for every time someone tells me he's a famous celebrity, I'd be a millionaire. Or a billionaire. Maybe even a trillionaire. I'm sure it's nothing but rumors and lies. Uh, Adam, what now? Lies and rumors are what you hear at the market. My books feature nothing but the truth. With a... Supcon of artistic liberty. Well, good luck with your writing, I guess. Thanks. Is there anything else you wanted to know? I'm honestly not in the mood for a lengthy discussion. And what's your name? Because we haven't been properly introduced. Call me Cas Casalibin, and be sure to remember it. When I've achieved fame and glory. I'll be bragging to all your friends about how we once met. Glory doesn't just come to you. What are you waiting in this tavern for? You want to know the truth? All right, I'll tell you. Not that long ago, I saw one of the losers from the refugee camp bury a can in the minefield near the city walls. Must be some treasure he stole up north. Now I'm thinking about whether it's worth to go over there or if it's just a bad idea. What makes you think there's a, a treasure? What else could it be? You wouldn't risk your life to bury a can of stewed f uh, fruit in a minefield. I'm telling you, it's money buried out there. The party's gold or something. Where exactly did he hide it? If it's not a secret, of course. You sly dog. You must either be a complete moron or the most devious person in the world to ask something like that. Of course it's a secret. You can find your own treasure, wastrel. You go dig it out. Riches aren't going to come along and knock at your door, you know. You're right. But on the other hand, if I trip a mine that... If I trip a mine, what use will the money be to me then? What if you don't trip a mine? Fortune favors the brave. Mon ami. You think so? I'm absolutely positive. Crap. What am I doing sitting here? Get out of my way. I'm gonna get what's rightfully mine. Yep. Good luck. Assuming he's gonna blow himself up. <laughs> hey, he's doing so well, too. Well, give it the old college try, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that guy said his book was in here somewhere. I'm assuming. Well, let me talk to this guy about it. I'm just going to see if anyone has anything to say about his quest, and then we'll wrap it up. And I guess I'll look for it off camera. Here we go. Alright, the cook jumps between a variety of different pots and pans, completely focused on his job. But despite all the fire, steam, and smoke, the only dishes he seems to be cooking are strange smelling soup and salt pork. Have you seen any surrealist novels lying around? Surreal what? What the heck are you talking about? The owner of the hotel told me he lost some kind of manuscript. Oh, I figured the old slave driver would be interested in writing. Here's my advice. Forget about it. We're good at novels. Good do you came to do... Go do what you came to the city to do. Don't waste your time futzing around in this dusty old inn. Okay then, bye. 
I feel like he probably knows something about it. If we wrap this up real fast. I wonder if he has it on his body. I'll have a lot of pickpocket. Hmm. I don't know. Figure it out off camera, I think. But for now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.